Alright, hello guys. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about why I think the severe weather season of 2020 could be one of the worst of all time. It draws major comparisons to some of our previous worst of all time severe weather seasons, so I think that potentially this one could be very historic. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social medias. And for today's comment of the day, it's going to be, what is your craziest experience with severe weather that impacted you directly? And I'll be picking my favorite one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get right into things. So first things first, I'm showing you the thumbnail here because I wanted to talk about this a little bit. And some people are probably going to point out, well, obviously there's going to be cold, dry air to the north and warm, humid air to the south. Here's the thing, though. I'm forecasting warmer than normal and more humid than normal air to the south. So literally, it's going to be even more warm and humid than normal. And then to the north, I'm forecasting for more cold and more dry air than what is typical. And these two extremes are looking to meet in the middle where we typically see a lot of severe weather during the severe weather season. And this setup has been what creates these historic severe weather seasons like 2011, 2004, 2008. A lot of these bigger years that we've had in recent memory were created by conditions similar to what I'm showing right here in this thumbnail, and it is what is expected this year. Now, we're about to move on, and we're going to start looking at some charts. I'm going to start going down and talking about historical numbers here about why I think this year could be a historic one. Now, this chart right here just shows us throughout the year where we're at as far as tornadoes and then comparatively to each month. So you can see the months on the bottom and then the lines indicating where the months begin and end there. So keep, keep that in mind. The red is the most and then the pink is the least we've ever had through the end of the year. Uh, and then the blue is below average, green is average, and yellow is above average. So as you can see, our black line there is what we've experienced so far in 2020. And this is only going through the beginning of February, so it's a little bit lagged behind there. Uh, so it says 108 there uh, through the beginning of February, which is above average, well above average. It's not historic yet. But it's definitely well above average. So we're off to a start that looks concerning already. Uh, and let's go ahead and look at those killer tornadoes that we've had so far this year. Uh, we had one on January 10th there for Texas. We had one on January 11th. There are actually two on January 11th. One was in Alabama. Uh, and then one was in Louisiana. And then on February 6th, we had another one in Alabama. So this is well above average. Typically, we see maybe one or two in the winter months, and we've seen four already this year. So we're already seeing these killer tornadoes start up, and it's looking like a dangerous year already for tornadoes, in my opinion. Uh, and here's our confirmed tornadoes uh, by their uh, enhanced Fujita rating. So we see uh, there was 40 EF0 so far this year, 68 EF1s and 19 EF2s, and we haven't had anything above that yet, which isn't too abnormal, but to have that many tornadoes, 129 in total, uh, which I know that's different than what the last chart showed, but this is a more recent reading here. Uh, it's very above normal, very, very abnormal. All right, so we're about to move on, and we're going to start talking about the last time we saw an EF5 and why I think we are due for an EF5. It's been a very, very long time, and I'm going to talk about the last one we saw. Now, I think people underestimate how rare EF5s actually are. I think they think it's some sort of yearly occurrence. It's, you know, one or two or three happen a year. That's just not the case. You might be thinking that it might have been a couple years since we've had one, but the last time we had one was the Moore, Oklahoma tornado in 2013, seven years ago, was the last time we had a EF5 tornado, which is, I was almost shocked by that number. I thought we've definitely had one since then, but no, it's been since 2013, seven years uh, and before that, we had a ton in 2011, and, and it, it, we've never had this long without one. It's actually been, we've had a really good uh, few years with, you know, a little bit less dangerous tornadoes. Last year was a big tornado year, but we didn't have any EF5s, thankfully. Uh, and here's a picture of the Moore, Oklahoma tornado there, if you've never seen it. Uh, and then here's the damage it caused. So these EF5 tornadoes are very dangerous. But something I wanted to bring up as well while I'm on this topic is just because it's not an EF5, doesn't mean that it's not extremely damaging and doesn't mean it's not a killer tornado. I just showed you four killer tornadoes. We haven't even had an EF3 yet. So these EF2s, EF1s, and even EF0 tornadoes can be deadly 
uh, and you have to obviously take them very, very seriously. So we're about to move on and we're going to take a look at historically that 2013 year. We're going to take a look at the numbers and then we're going to move on to drawing comparisons to the conditions this year to some of the historic tornado years, uh, basically getting into why I'm saying this year could be historic. All right, so here was our chart for 2013, and you can see we only had one EF5 tornado, and again, that was that Moore, Oklahoma tornado. We had eight EF4s, which can also be very bad, obviously, and then EF3s, we had 19, which, again, can be very, very bad. Even EF2s and belows can be very bad. Uh, but we only had 903 tornadoes total, and you might think that that's a lot, but that's actually well below average for the entire year. That's We had a very below average tornado year in 2013, uh, and here's that chart again. Look, the minimum typical that we see through December 31st is 944. Uh, and this chart here says that we ended the year with 802 confirmed tornadoes. Um, so definitely a below average year to say the least. Again, blue is below average, which is 1,100. We ended the year with 802 confirmed tornadoes. Average is 1,200. So we had 400 less tornadoes than what is typical. Uh, very actually a very you know good year we didn't have any we didn't have a lot of tornadoes that year so looking at our above average tornado years 2004 2008 2009 2011 and 2019 those are all our biggest ones in recent memory this is what their temperatures typically looked like again colder than normal conditions to the north and warmer the normal conditions to the south in all of these years. I looked at all of them individually. All of them have a similar look to this. And this is what they average out looking like. Uh, and then here's what 2011 looked like, which is the biggest one in recent memory. So I also wanted to show this. So you can see warm to the south, cold to the north. Uh, and then here's what I'm forecasting. Warm to the south, cold to the north. So this is obviously a very, very concerning look to see the similarities here to 2011. And not only 2011, but also the compiled mean average of all of the above average tornado years in recent memory uh, put together look very similar to what we're calling for this spring. Uh, and this is why I think this could go down as one of those years. This could be one of the years that we use in those numbers and those analogs for big tornado years. Uh, and then here's that precipitation uh, in all of those years, 2004, 2008, 2009, 2011, and 2019. And then here's the results. The blue is above average precipitation, and then the yellows and greens are below average precipitation. And you can see we had above average precipitation for Texas up through a lot of the deep south and some of those uh, central plains and through kind of Kentucky, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, those areas. Uh, and then here was 2011, so you could see very similar to the mean average of all of the above average years. And then here's what we're calling for. Again, very similar conditions. Above average precipitation in these typical severe weather areas would create more storms, which in turn would typically mean more chances for severe weather. Now we're about to get into a few other statistics like humidity and other things and just talk about the total numbers for 2011 and some final thoughts for the severe weather season. Now, here's our actual relative humidity for 2004, 2008, 2009, 2011, 2019 compared to normal. And the blue is above average relative humidity. And then the greens and yellows is below average relative humidity. And you can see for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, we had above average relative humidity. And you might be thinking that's not too important and it's a pretty small area. Uh, and this isn't usually a an anomaly that people use on analog years, but I just found it interesting. Humidity is a big player in thunderstorm development and severe weather. So we saw above average humidity in those years, which means probably more Gulf moisture was making its way into the deep South. And that's what I'm calling for. Uh, obviously you saw that in the thumbnail. So it is interesting to see that these bigger years did average out having conditions like that. Now I wanted to talk about a little bit of 2011 because that was obviously one of our really, really big years. And follow the black line. Through February, we didn't even have that much tornadoes. Even through March, we were about average. We were below average through February, but through March, we were a little bit above average or maybe near average to end March. It's once we got through April, things exploded. 
Uh, if you follow the line, the black line through April, we made it into historic numbers, almost 1,000 tornadoes through the end of April, uh, and then through the end of May. We started May off kind of slow, and then the end of May, uh, by the time we reached the end of May, we were at about 1,250 tornadoes, so I mean, well above average by that point, and then all we needed was average tornadoes after that point to get us, you know, we were already so well above average that the summer tornadoes and the fall tornadoes took us um, to historic numbers to end the year. 1,612 confirmed tornadoes for 2011, uh, which is historic, obviously one of the top tornado years in in memory or even recorded. Uh, So to see comparisons being drawn from 2011 to this year is obviously very, very concerning. That's one of those years you do not want to see on, on your anomaly chart or your analog chart. Now, here's those confirmed tornadoes by enhanced Fujita rating. Uh, we had 794 EF zeros, 627 EF ones, 198 EF twos, 61 EF threes, 17 EF fours. And remember, since 2013, we've had zero EF fives. In 2011 alone, we had six EF five tornadoes, which is just incredible. That is just an incredible statistic there. And then here's this year. Just for comparison, we're already way ahead of 2011, and we're already way above average through January and February. Not that that means we will be, for sure. That's not really a good statistic, but into February, we already have 108 tornadoes again on this chart, which is above average for this time of year. And here's my severe weather forecast. I showed this in my spring forecast. I just wanted to show this. Uh, And I am expecting above average severe weather for all of the pink regions and then well above average chances for severe weather within the the deeper red regions there. Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, southern Indiana, southern Illinois. All of these regions I expect to have more severe weather than what is typical. And I think probably if you've watched this entire video, you would probably agree with me having seen all of the statistics I showed. All right. Now for my comment of the day. I asked, what was your favorite month uh, weather-wise of the year? And Heathen Wolf said, October. Love the chill and the fog, and I can't agree anymore. I I love the fog. I love when it's just starting to cool down. What a beautiful time of year. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be safe this severe weather season, please, guys. It is not to be played around with. Tornadoes are very dangerous. EF zeros through EF5, all of them are very, very dangerous, so stay safe. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to share it with your friends and family, and I will see you guys in the next video.